So, uh, sorry, I have to um, hold my laptop, otherwise it will crash. Um, so I, I will do the last uh, lighting talk um, since we are running late. Um, so I, today I'm, I'm, I'm going to present you uh, with uh, Doc Intel. So uh, first of all, who am I? I'm just a, a random dude. Okay, you know, real time patching. I mean, like physical patching, taping the laptop. Okay, it works. I'm so I'm I'm Antoine. I I like computers. I'm a training cooking chef, an emergency technician for the last ten years, and a really bad photographer with a way too expensive camera. I I started uh, development. I basically when I started reading and writing, so it's quite a long time ago. I I do have a PhD in computer science and risk analysis, and basically I do stuff at Belgian Defense. I no need to remind you, but uh, I think cyber threat intelligence is key. Uh, we are seeing more and more um, organization leveraging um, threat intelligence in many teams, uh, but we, we face some challenges. So it's a really fast um, spaced um, and volume intensive environment. Uh, we need to digest information rapidly, but we need to produce information rapidly. And we need a, a mix of technical and analytical skills. And I think that the talk of Louise um, highlighted that uh, we have like the very technical uh, bits to the very strategic levels. Uh, so we need specific tools. Our um, community decided to name them uh, threat intelligence platforms, for whatever reason. Um, and I, most of them focus on technical indicators, not really on context. Um, and for us, it has been a, an issue. But knowledge management is really hard. Uh, I think that some of the talks highlighted that. Uh, for example, the, the last uh, two points have been uh, highlighted by uh, Robert yesterday. Um, but accessibility and control to the information is hard. I, sorting the information, I, making it a bit organized is hard. Searching in information is hard, yeah, even in, 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 in these, uh, these days. Your subject matter experts will leave your organization, whether you like it or not. That's, uh, that's the reality, but you still want to keep the knowledge that uh, they shared with you over the years. Um, I'm focusing on, on the, on the two first one for this talk. So access to, um, the information is, uh, is difficult. We have reports everywhere. Um, all the um, security vendors there, they have these information portals uh, that you are forced to use to access the information that you are paying quite a high price for it. Uh, you have all the analysts that have uh, PDF reports in one of the folders on the desktop, um, and you have the blog post on the, the website, but those disappear. So the questions are, okay, what if, what if the commercial contract ends? I do not say that you need to keep the uh, intelligence even if you no longer have a commercial contract, but leave that open to a um, discussion. Um, what if your analysts leave the organization? What if the researcher decide to close the, his blog and then you lose the information? I'm searching in all these sources is a nightmare. And I, we want to search for exact phrases. Uh, classical examples, uh, but also for approximate terms, like Urobros, Urobros, or Urobros, I, I, I can't remember what I, um, or what exact word I need to use, and everyone is using a different one. And I, the community gets really creative when um, they want to share the observables with you. Um, they find new ways to obfuscate that, so to make sure that you cannot find the information back. So to solve these issues, I, we will not use SharePoint. I'm, so I'm introducing uh, DocIntel. So what is DocIntel? It's basically a centralized knowledge base for your threat intelligence reports. Um, the objective is to make the information available to everyone, to make the search easy, to encourage collaboration, and many other things. We aim to replace the folders on the analyst uh, workstation uh, and to replace these crappy information portals. The main difference is that we focus on the context, not on the technical indicators. So basically, 4.5 years ago, so there, there was no report in MISP, um, and we were tracking reports in an Excel file. And I know that some organizations still do that today, but we can do better. So um, DocIntel is a web application uh, that will regroup all these reports and make it available for um, everyone in your team. So for example, that's the homepage. 
uh, you have the latest document that matches your uh, subscription, what is of interest to you, I, and all the documents that um, are available in the database. So that's a page when I click and I see the document, I can read the document directly. Um, I do not need to download it somewhere. I, I have the tags to organize the information. Um, I have the source so I can see um, everything. I will come back to all these uh, items um, more um, slowly. Uh, we extract all the observables. Uh, you can just one click have them in your clipboard so you can do your work. So the key features mainly is search, search and filter the reports to find the information that you really need. Uh, you can use the tags to uh, organize your threat intelligence. You can track and rate the sources uh, to ensure that your team is only using reliable one. And you can control the access. So not everyone can access all the reports. That's a reality, but very few organizations are able to enforce that. So the key concepts in, in DocIntel are the following ones. There are three slides, don't worry. I, the first concept is document. A document is just a collection of files. So mainly it's a PDF uh, report, but it can also be like a text file with a snort rule or an Excel file with a bunch of IOCs. Uh, you can bundle everything in a document, give it a nice t title, a description, and, um, and then you, you can go for it. Um, we organize the information with tags that are groups uh, grouped in facets. So for example, here we, are, we can see a few tags that match countries and we use a facet target geography that uh, document what country has been uh, mentioned as a target in the uh, related report. We have facets, uh, the second facet is software that keeps track of the software mentioned in the report. We have sources that are basically provider of um, documents and files. You can read them. So uh, you can ask your analyst to only search in a reliable source. If you need, for example, to produce a report in an hour, might speed up your work. You can add comments. Uh, we extract observables. We have groups to control who can see the information. So for example, if you attend the first conference, uh, there you could uh, see all the um, presentation that were at CLP Red, um, but that are only available to the member of that specific group. We can control um, fine-grained uh, what the user can do. Uh, we can import automatically, uh, and you can subscribe to the topics that are of interest to you. So back to uh, that um, that page with a, a document. So uh, now that we uh, we know a bit uh, the the, um, the concepts, we have the tags, uh, so we can see okay uh, that technique was mentioned in the report. Uh, we have here, three files, a PDF report, an HTML report, and then an attachment that was extracted uh, when we did the scraping. We can see the source, uh, we leave security, uh, we can see the rating I gave for the presentation. Um, you can see when it was extracted and uh, all that information. Then we can see the, uh, the observables that were mentioned in the report. You can search for the one that you are interested in. One button, one click. You have the observables, no need for fancy, fancy stuff. So, okay, that's my laptop falling. I'm, no, okay, I will stay there. I'm, so that, that is one document, okay, but I need to find that document. Yeah, sorry. No, it's not work. I'm, if you already bought something online, you can search in DocIntel. Uh, basically, that's exactly the same. You have a search box, you can search, and then you have the filters here on the left. Uh, so you can only get products that are like climate friendly. Uh, basically, it's exactly the same page. Uh, the filters are on the right. Uh, you have a search box. You, you might want, for example, to search for log4j. No idea why you would do that, but anyway. Um, and then you can filter to say, to only see, um, the uh, reports that are, for example, tagged with uh, one specific uh, threat actor or one specific country. Um, so, okay, now we have documents. We can search for them, but you still need to put the documents inside. And that's usually painful. So 
Doc Intel does a, a lot of pre-processing to make your life much easier. So we extract metadata, we extract tags, and that's based on keywords and regular expression. You can customize all that. Um, we extract um, observables that like regular expression, but tuned. Uh, it's not foolproof. It's, it's just there to make your life easier and to assist the user, basically. So what is the most common use case for uh, Doc Intel? That's like daily collection and processing. I think that many, many organizations do that. So you find an, an interesting blog post, um, you generate a PDF, and then usually you save the PDF somewhere in an Excel file, in a, in a folder, and you forget it. Here you just import the PDF into Doc Intel. It's pre-processed, analyzed. You review the document, register it, and then you can enjoy. So for example, let me take that, uh, that blog post. You read it, found it interesting generate a, a PDF. I will come back on, on that a little bit later. You upload the, the PDF, so it's uh, there on the right. And then it's pre-processed, so that's that's the document. The, the first one is the, the one we just uploaded. It extracted the group. It extracted the country. It's mentioned in the, in the report. Um, it mapped the techniques. Um, even the tool that was mentioned in the, in the report, then you just need to review that. So. You can update the title, you add a small summary, you check the tags, you add the, the one that are missing, you check the classification, because I'm from a military organization, we like to make things really complex. Um, then you update the source, uh, where the information come from, and you can review the observable. So you have the curation process that is in the, okay, the ashes looks good, uh, the domain looks really bad, but you can see that uh, Doc Intel wants you, okay, maybe you want to have a look at that one because yeah, you know, extract it automatically, but feels weird. You can do the same with the URL, so it extracts the URLs. But the system will learn over the time the ones that you are constantly refusing. So for example here, uh, advantage.manian.com, we want to just ignore all the URLs that uh, uh, belong to that domain. So you tell him that once, and then the next time it imports, it will just uh, learn that, uh, okay, that's not needed. Then you have the report, you can search for it, um, and then enjoy the rest of your day. So basically that's it. But there is a little bit more, so we can control what the user can see, what the user can do. Uh, you can handle your um, threat intelligence more securely, so it, everything can be protected with a multi-factor authentication, connects to your LDAP, um, generate audit logs. So you can also review uh, who has seen what document when. Um, you can automate the collection, you can get lazy, get notified of the document that you are interested in, and reuse the work that has been done by the community over the, the last years. So you can import misp taxonomies, galaxies, all the attack tags, and, uh, and all that. Under the hood, it's a C-sharp application. Sorry for the PHP developers. Um, it's based on the uh, Microsoft.net and uh, um, other technologies. So the good news is uh, Doc Intel is free, open source. Well, it's not free, it's a shared cost. Um, the community is uh, um, sharing the cost, will be sharing the cost of, um, of Doc Intel, but it's freely available, open source. Um, if you use Docker, you can basically deploy it uh, in five minutes unless you are using Apple M M1, but I do not know why you would do that. Uh, you can find more information on the website. And if you need commercial support or manage instances, uh, feel, free to, um, feel free to reach out. Um, there is a complete API for the tool. Um, there is a Python API client that uh, that will come. I just need to review a, a bunch of code, uh, but will be soon. There is the documentation also, but I mean, it's been four years. There is a lot of features there that I need to document. <coughs> so uh, yeah, it will be a painful nights of documenting. And we have many, many other features that are that are coming. If you are a customer of commercial Intel data feed or producer of these feeds, uh, please reach out because I'm super interested in writing the connectors to make life of everyone easy. I would like also thanks my employer, the Belgian Defense Cyber Command. You can see the new logo uh, was just released last night. Um, but also the support that I roll and the positive feedback that I, that I already received. So I tweeted that Monday evening and then Next day in the morning, I was like, what? But I uh, basically, um, Doc Intel is an open source platform for storing, 
organizing searching documents related to your cyber threats, provides a searchable, um, user-friendly central repository for all the reports. It improves the consolidation, the fusion, and the dissemination of knowledge. And it focuses on context and reports, not really on technical indicators. Um, feel free to reach out. Great, thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Um, does it support also binaries, for example? You want to upload binaries in that? Yeah. Um, not at the moment, but that's something. Uh, so in the back end, for everything that is technical, we are pushing that into a Synapse database. Uh, Synapse support that kind of binaries. So that's something we could do. OK, thanks. Other questions? No more questions? I'm surprised. I was expecting more questions. Means that it was clear. Yeah. Or that nobody is interested. Could oh, oh Andras has questions. Uh, should I give him the mic? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so just a quick one. First of all, thanks for releasing it. I mean, if it's been a long time coming and we've been waiting for it. Uh, I, I saw that you mentioned in one of the uh, last slides that you're also doing uh, premium support. Uh, what what does it entail and how does it work? Uh, so can you can you? Uh, so what 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 does it entail and when do you already have like some plans for uh, what it actually looks like in practice for the support? Yeah. Um, at the moment, it's like a, an open question. So I I I do not know. I how many people want to use the tool um, and what kind of support they need. I, I know that I can help them running large instances. So I know that the tool scales up to um, hundreds of thousands of documents, but you might need some tuning to do that. Um, so yeah, basically it's an open question and we will see in the upcoming month uh, what people are, I need or if we just kill the project and then don't. Uh, Oh, we have more questions. Yeah, just a small question. Uh, over the 10 or 15 years, I've downloaded a lot of threat reports and I've searched on them on the most terrible ways. So this is like, wow. So 50 gigabits of reports, how much resources do I need or? Well, it's a good question, but a standard virtual machine should be enough. Cool. Uh, you, I mean, from my point of view, uh, 50 gigabits is, uh, gigabits is like a, sm a rather small data set. Say, just have a scale for me. Scale is different for everyone. I, I know it scales up to that number of documents on a very non-fancy environment. Uh, but it works on Kubernetes and there you could scale. Awesome. Again, thank you very much. <laughs>